But now we come to Richard Gere, an actor who's been much in need of a break lately. He started off, promisingly enough, with eye-catching roles in Looking for Mr. Goodbar and Days of Heaven. Did pretty well in Yanks, and then became both a star and a sex symbol in American Gigolo, when he presented us with a full frontal, offering all of Richard's gear for public appraisal. An officer and a gentleman did him no harm either, but from then on it was pretty well downhill for the best part of the 80s. The remake of Breathless with gear in the Jean-Paul Belmondo role was frankly a mistake, and King David, in which in the eponymous role he danced into Jerusalem while wearing an enormous nappy, was little short of hilarious. Two or three unmemorable movies followed, and at the age of 40 he was in danger of becoming Richard who? But now, such is the marvellous unpredictability of the film business, Richard Gere is back, a star reborn. A romantic comedy called Pretty Woman has done formidable business in the United States and a policier, Internal Affairs, in which he plays a corrupt and evil cop has gained him his best reviews for nearly a decade. Well, Internal Affairs opens in London next week and Richard Gere is here to talk about it. Richard, um, Internal Affairs and Pretty Woman, you seem to have made more or less back-to-back, -back, and I've seen it described, the two films described, as your comeback. Do you see it that way? No, because I've always been here, you know? <laughs> no, no, not at all. I think it's... They ended up being quite commercial movies, successful, meaning that they communicated, um, which I guess I haven't had a film that really communicated that well for a while. Well, you haven't had a film for a while because between, what, 1985 or 1986 and those two films, you made only one, Miles From Home. Now, what happened there? Did you, were you no longer the flavour of the month in Hollywood or was it your choice not to? No, I could have worked more. I guess there was nothing that really inspired me that much. I was doing a lot of other kinds of things that had very little to do with my career that were much more interesting, frankly. Isn't it a bit dangerous to vanish from sight, as it were, for two or three years? I guess it is. I guess it is. I don't... I don't see my life that way so much, you know, it's more of this kind of everyday moment-to-moment -moment interest that I find is more, more appealing to me. But I did find when last year started that uh, my, my, my situation in the, in the business was certainly not it was, as it was when I had done uh, Officer and a Gentleman in that period. I had a few successes in a row. And I did feel that it was time for me to make some, some movies, so I decided this was about this time last year, I said, I'm going to do two movies, three movies, back to back. The best ones I find, but do them. And uh, get back in the business. And you're back, you're back. Which I'm is back. Nice to the guy is great. back. Yeah, it's nice to see. Let's talk about those movies, Internal Affairs. Now, that, the character you play in that is, is really rotten, isn't it? It's a very difficult character, there's no question, Internal Affairs. Um, it took me a while to come around to want to do it. Uh, I was quite disturbed by the script when I read it. I found I wanted to explore why it was disturbing me so much. But I think what is interesting is none of the things he does is out of anger yeah. or malice. Malice is not one of his emotions. Control, manipulation, yes, this is where he comes from. I could do that. I could get you a couple gangbangers to do this. They'd go in there and shoot them, cut their heads off, bury them. They'd leave their uh, parking tickets all over the house, name, address, they'd be picked up the next day by the police, and they would love to talk, and they will. First thing they'll do, they'll talk about you and your lovely wife. What are you saying? What are you saying, man? Fifteen thousand dollars. How much do you want? All right, I'll tell you what's going to happen here. You're going to go home and you're going to think about this. I thought about it. Shut up. And you're going to call me in a couple days. Nice to meet you, Steven. Can I trust you? Of course, you can trust me. I'm a cop. And then, of course, in Pretty Woman, entirely different character, isn't it? I mean, much more straightforward romantic hero. This is a 40s romantic, charming comedy. You know, what Hollywood supposedly does best. It hasn't been done very much, unfortunately. No, and I've never done it before. You know, on stage, I've never worked in this genre before in film. So it was um, kind of a leap into the void for me. Vivian, I have a business proposition for you. What do you want? I'm going to be in town until Sunday. I'd like you to spend a week with me. Really? Yes. Yes, I'd like to hire you as an employee. Would you consider spending the week with me? <laughs> I will pay you to be at my beck and crawl. 
Look, I'd love to be your beck and call girl, but um, you're a rich, good-looking guy. You could get a million girls free. I want a professional. Now, it, it seems to me like a, a shrewd bit of selection on your part to take two <laughs> such entirely different characters. I and know. Play I've them never been accused of shrewdness in my selection well, of accusing, characters. I'm accusing, but, but, but it was shrewd, wasn't it? It turned out that way, in hindsight, because they both were, I think, good films and successful films. What about Grease? Now, you, you did Grease on stage. Why did they ask I John did. Travolta to do the role instead of you in the film? I don't remember when this was. This was right after Saturday Night Fever, probably. He probably was, yes, well, yes. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was bigger than you at that time. Yeah, I mean, a, a commercial venture like a musical. Yeah. Which, prima facially, they're a commercial venture. You can't do them small. You have to do them as an industry. Yeah. Um, you know, it was a wise choice on their part, I think. It was very successful. Because I don't think I would have been good, as good in it. I mean, I'm... I tend to bring a lot more baggage with me doing a, a role. Yeah. I make things a little complex. <laughs> oh, yes, you have that reputation. Yes. <laughs> Not in terms of working, but it just in terms of yeah. the characters tend to be more complex. And I don't think a complex Danny Zuko would have worked as well. No problem. No, it had to be a fairly simple kind of yeah. character, I think. Yeah. But there was a sort of tit for tat in that you got an American gigolo. Paul Schrader was a friend of mine who wrote it. And. As I recall, Freddie Fields was producing it at the time. And Looking for Mr. Goodbar had just come out. In fact, three films of mine. First three films came out at the same time. So all of a sudden, I was a movie star. From having been this hardworking theater actor, I was now the movie thing. And um, I was approached to do this movie, American Gigolo. And I liked it. Thought it was very interesting. I never had a suit on in my life. So it would be interesting to learn how to do this stuff. So it was an interesting character. And uh, then it was taken away from me and given to John, I believe. And then John pulled out for some reason, and then I ended up doing it. Yeah, well, I, I gather his reason for not doing it was that he didn't fancy being totally nude. That didn't, did that worry you? It wasn't in the script. It was, wasn't in the script, it no. was? No. Oh, whose idea was that? Just did it. Was, was that altogether a wise thing? Because it, it, it's, it's well, something you, you, that... Well, I come from a different place. Then yeah. I'm, think of me more as a European actor. It just doesn't worry about that stuff. Yeah. I mean, this happens all the time in European films. It's not a big deal. So that's where I was coming from. I was coming from difficult theater, difficult movies, you know, another way of thinking about things altogether. Uh, not a commercial decision. You know, you're doing the work. And if you're playing that kind of a character, it seemed it'd be foolish to be modest. I mean, it's insane. Yeah. Now, it was a curious film because there's very little sex in the movie, but it's titillating on the edges. Thank you. It's been a wonderful evening. Tak, der Hervorat on Unibark Well. Can I see you again tomorrow? How about this one? There was a sexy girl from Bargain Place. <laughs> Do you live alone? Well, yes, yeah, some. Mm, such a sweet face. Uh, they, they, they came period when the films weren't doing so well at the box office. Now, is, is that because, uh, I mean, does this, happen, does this happen to everybody, or was it something you did, or you just weren't picking the right films, or people didn't appreciate how good the films were? How, what do you attribute that to? Attribute what? The f well, the fact that there was a period when, when your films were not doing so well at, at the box office. I don't know. I. I... I think all careers have movement. You know, there's no way to sustain a total top in any. Margaret Thatcher is not doing well these days. Yeah, you know, this is true. This is true. <laughs> so uh, that's to be expected. Yeah. You know, I think I think clearly I made a lot of choices that were not for the marketplace. I made some very difficult films that there was no way that they would be big box office. You've said that. You're not really terribly interested in, in fame, and yet you continue in a, in a profession in which you've got to be famous, or metaphorically, you're dead. Is, is there a, any sort of contradiction in that? I'm not interested in fame. I'm not interested in the accoutrements of fame. Although I find myself in an interesting position today, which I'm pretty comfortable with, of accepting the fact of my fame, 
my celebrity, let's call it that, celebrity. The fact that I'm known, you're known on the street, so you're a celebrity. And there's a certain amount of baggage that comes along with that. Yeah. In fact, you're probably better known on the street than I am because of the tube. Television makes you much more recognizable to people on the street. Yeah, but the trouble is, I think the women would look at you and not at me if we were walking down the street together. We'll never walk down the street together. <laughs> okay, I thanks. promise. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I, th I think there's a transition that I went through, and, and which has always been uncomfortable with the idea of just being noticed. Mm. Uh, I think most actors are quite shy, and uh, most performers are quite shy, kind of private people. But I began to discover that the interest that I had led me into areas that my celebrity could be of service to to make difficult causes known where millions of people are suffering um you've done this is a great gift with, with tibet haven't you i mean you've done a lot of well work. i'm focusing very much on that now and have been for maybe three years are, are you are you a buddhist yourself yeah i practice yeah and but i just came from india what, what were you doing i was there were two things there one was a conference of people who had been involved with tibet support groups for some time. And then there was a teaching, several teachings actually, with, with His Holiness the Dalai Lama after that, which is really why I went. Could you envisage a time when you, you just stop acting, stop movie making, and concentrate on that kind of work? No, I think they go hand in hand, very much so. I think my, my credibility and my access to media so that I can do that kind of work certainly is dependent on me continuing as a career as a, as a performer, but it's my job. A job but I think I found the good enough balance in my life of doing that as a job mm -hmm. and doing this kind of spiritual practice which is very satisfying and kind of human rights political social activist work also that it's a really good combination of things and my life feels very very interesting and fulfilled through that that's great long long may it continue thank Thanks. you very much indeed it's good to see you you too Yes, well, I certainly wouldn't want to walk down the street alongside that man. Internal Affairs opens next week.